Hey guys, we've got our friend Dr. Steve Sikorsky out here today. You maybe saw a podcast and some exercises that he taught us last year. We're going to show you some cool exercises. He's teaching me how to run more efficiently and how to improve our general health. we got a podcast we're recording today and as well as some physical fitness stuff from Dr. Steve. So when we are squatting, like a lot of times uh, I'll have patients that'll come in and they'll tell me they have bad knees or will they say I have bad back or bad hip or whatever and then I can't squat because of that. Well, squatting is a fundamental movement pattern. Babies do it, you know, very quickly in life and they do it perfectly. So we have that pattern of the mechanics in us. We can just have to bring it out. And pretty much everybody can get out of a chair. So if we're going to start to squat, if we're a beginner, we're going to use a chair, a bench, our feet. The wider our feet are apart, the easier it will be. So we're gonna go just a smidge wider, just to make it a little easier with, I'm gonna sit down, yep, and then again, there, boom. So there was an, there is an example. This is very far forward. This could put pre extra pressure, you were far forward. P extra pressure on the back, and if we do have back pain, uh, this could exacerbate it. But if we were here, we don't have to worry about balance in the chair backs up, hands would be here, and then up we come. Boom. Yes. And again. Bam. Now, let's say you're not strong enough to get up. Keep going. From such a low position, well, we could do it off the edge of the couch, the, the armrest. That would be uh, yeah, perfect. And then you would come back up. Boom. That's a nice, simple way uh, to squat. Now, if we go from the side here, come around to here. This is what we look for with our back on a squat. So Nikki's gonna go all the way down and he's gonna do that first thing he did there. That was the pivot point. We don't wanna have our spine bending there. There, see there's, this, there's the straightness of the, of the back. That's our safe thing. Same thing as if we're sitting all day and right now everybody's locked and maybe working from home. We want to maintain a good neutral spine. We want to make sure we have something in the small of our back. A pillow, a towel, putting us in that position. Just break down for me. Boom. Now, if we sit in front of the computer all day long, this is shown to put a tremendous amount of pressure um, through the disc. A disc is like a jelly donut. And so if we bring the front of the vertebrae together, it's going to be pushing the disc material backwards. So that position there is the position of safety. The same thing we're going to think about too if we turn our hands up and we bring it in, here is where we would want our mouse. I know we're off the topic of working out, but we have so many people working from home. This position here, very uh, safe. We're in good alignment. Resist me. Now feel the pressure in through your shoulder and in through your neck. Resist me. Feel the difference. Mm -hmm. I actually now, felt that in the top of my head. So now picture a million movements like this, how hard or how much Activi activity we need in the shoulder girdle and look at the position of the front of the shoulder. So most of my patients who come in who have like rotator cuff, they're going to be on the dominant side. Now, if we take that hand, we bring it back in. Look at the alignment of the shoulder. So much better. Back, we're in a thing, less activation. And so this is a big tangent in a rabbit hole. But if we're at home, we need to make sure that we have something that's going to support us to keep us in alignment. And I call this zombie because zombies walk around like this. Mm. Well, we're a human. Now we're back to being alive. Mouse, keyboard, monitor. That's going to be a really nice, safe way to prevent ourselves. This might be a little bit low to sit in all day. We would want to be a little bit higher. But right now, because we're out in the park, there, boom. That's a beautiful position. So now now we can take this beautiful position and then stand. Boom. There's a beautiful squat. Anybody can do this. Doesn't matter, especially if we have any grandparents, older patients, one of the besides the general heart disease, stroke, cancer, falls. And so falls can kill old people. And what do we do? What have you heard? You know, oh, I fall and broke my hip. Well, what's a safer way to build strength than a squat? And then beautiful. Bam, and then up. And that's a great way, nice and simple. Anybody can do this. For grandma and grandpa, I recommend, you know, like anytime they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, do 10 squats out of the chair. Try not to touch. And you can see old people, they push themselves up because they don't have that strength. So how are they gonna stop themselves from a fumble? If we're using weight and holding weight, we would hold it on the front of the body. And that's just the most safe 
squat there is, it's the goblet squat. He's just gonna hold it against them just like if he was drinking from a goblet. Boom, safe and up, bam. Good. Now, so come to the side again, bring your feet really close together. Watch the change in the back when he squats there. It's, it's tougher. You have to use, yes, and now watch. Back's a little bit better. Now he goes a little bit ridiculously wide, like a sumo. Look how safe the back looks. So if we don't have the ability to have good hip mobility, then we can go a little bit wider. That'll protect our back. And then as we get better, we can come closer and closer. That's a nice, simple, safe exercise for anybody to do. My next favorite exercise to show is a curl up. So Mickey's just gonna lay down on the bench. And uh, we're gonna just bring one leg up, or you could bring both up here. He's gonna pop his hands underneath the small of his back. So underneath the belly button, he's gonna make a double chin. And now he's just gonna come up right to there. Hold it. 10, nine, this needs to turn on. Eight, seven, six, five, come on. Don't lose this. Three, two, one, and down. Safest lumbar spine exercise. If the, we had a longer bench, one leg would be down. We could alternate legs. An ultimate goal to start with would be 10 seconds, 10 times. We're always looking for quality over quantity. So if Mickey comes up and he starts to break, the chin comes forward and he <laughs> starts to come up, or we start shaking, or it's just not stable, then we're done. Because remember, we can do this every day. And we can put a little bit of input into our body safely, really start strengthening the core correctly. You need your lower abs. Turn them on, push. More. Yes, good. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. So there's another nice, simple thing for anybody who's starting to work out. Any of our couch potatoes or anybody that's trying to make changes. Plus, this is going to save our back. He's going to keep both his knees bent. Next basic exercise, we see a ton of this now. It's very Instagram um, sexy, and it's going to be a bridge. Head down. Oh. And then, now just bring your buttocks up off the table. Boom. Yes. Good. Turn your stomach on. Yes. And then this one, we're going to be uh, squeezing a peanut. Stomach is turned on. Uh, he should be able to fart. Hold, let your head drop. <laughs> no, honest, because they, we don't want to have any um, really low amount of pelvic floor activity. This is more for glutes. Down. Now, when we are doing our bridge, the more the knees are bent, the less the hamstring will be recruited, the more the glute. The further the, ham the legs are out, the more the hamstring. So if we're doing this and we're getting tons and tons of trolley horse, take a second, pull the knees in, and then that'll be more glute. I got your head. And then we're up. Good. Perfect. Stomach needs to be on. Good. And then we're squeezing the peanut. Stomach's tight. I got your head. And then firing and pelvic floor. We should be able to fart. Boom. There you go. And uh, that's the bread and butter. I work out. We do curl ups, me and my kids in the basement. Every time we work out, we do bridging every time we work out. There's some variations that are much harder, but this is a great thing. You start holding a bridge for a minute to two minutes. Uh, super hard great activation exercise. You could even put just a simple rubber band and then spread our legs. It'll make it even a little bit harder, but beautiful. Good. So this curl up, put your hand underneath your back. Watch how uh, quickly, even somebody who is in very good shape, as he comes up, what am I doing? the curl up, double chin. I mean, that's a pretty hard exercise. And if he started holding this for any amount of time, we're gonna start to get some shaking and, it, and it's very quick. So this is a great endurance exercise. And uh, when we get really in shape and we start holding it for a while, I mean, it's hard. I mean, you look good, but I bet you right now it's starting to get there. I'm okay. Yeah, all right. I'm okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that's another nice one. Um, if we're also if we're starting to uh, continue on this pattern of simple exercises, is a is a, a great uh, a push up. Uh, we could do push ups off our knees. We can do. I mean, everybody knows this. We've been doing push ups for our, our um, whole life. One of the things we want to be with our push up is if our elbows are up like this, it's going to be very hard on the shoulders. We're going to be down on a little bit of a 45 degrees. If I'm using my traps, this is gonna make it much harder for us to stabilize uh, our shoulder blades. We're gonna be down and just a little bit 
of a squeeze between the shoulder and it'll make a big difference. So uh, whether we're doing a push up from here, the back should not be arching. So we should be squeezing the peanut. Stomach should be tight and I mean activated and our arms will be there and we're gonna push up. The moment our neck comes forward, the moment we arch, then we're breaking down, stop. I'd rather have high quality exercise and you only get five of them than doing 20 and then you wind up tearing something or hurting your, uh, yourself because we got the rest of our lives to work on this. So that's another nice, simple exercise. Uh, you could use dumbbells if you have bad wrists. You can get push-up bars, the perfect push-up. If your wrists are good, just do it the good old-fashioned way. And then just some simple things like uh, carrying uh, a heavy object. So uh, Mickey's standing, he grabs. Now this is not very heavy. We're here, core's tight. Now with this, this isn't heavy, but let's say it was a little bit heavier and he started to break down like this. Well, no, we're gonna be straight, head up, shoulders back, boom. And then for a loaded carry, you just walk as far as you can. And then you just turn around, switch hands and come back. Simple, you could use anything in, that, in the house for that. And the good thing about this is it's core strength, but also we're working grip strength. We fall or slip on the stairs, we grab the handrail. Well, if we don't have the strength to stop ourselves, we're going down the stairs. So this is also important for our seniors, just the ability to grab groceries and carry them without dropping a grocery bag. So that's some simple, really safe things that we can do in the beginning to start improving our health. And uh, hopefully you can do them. Email me, send me some videos of you guys doing any of the exercises, especially squatting. I can critique it for you and then uh, maybe we can improve it. Are you bow-legged? Maybe. Do I look bow-legged to you? Uh-huh. Well, your right leg looks bow-legged. Could be. I've, 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 I've yeah. heard a lot of stuff. What? I said I could be. I've, I've hurt and broken a lot of things. Well, something's not right with that right leg. <laughs> Where's this little guy? It's coming. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. That's why I ran it twice. All right. You're too narrow. Too narrow. Yeah. You'll see it on the front. Let's go I don't ahead. know what too narrow means. I'm going to show you. Your feet, your, look how, look at that strike. And then look at that strike. You're almost running on a tightrope. That's what I was told to do. You're not supposed to run on a tightrope. Yeah, run in a straight line. It's harder to track me. <laughs> All right. Now, then look at your right leg. And why I'm saying, well, well, let's see the side view. All right. So your foot. That, that's a pretty good pull. Which way do I uh, scroll? What do you want to do? Scroll. No, no, you were fine. Stop. Okay, there. See, you wanna, you're not, you're not striking anywhere. God damn it. You're, you're, you're straight. Okay, so let's fix that. That's what we'll fix. We'll fix the two things that most people jack up. Watch. Straight, your la foot's not landing anywhere. I'm landing on my heel. Yeah, but not even nowhere near underneath the center of gravity. Okay. So you're breaking every time you hit the heel. Start feet to touching. Touching. Close your eyes. March in place. Open up. Okay. So there is probably where our body has its best balance. Like if okay. you took out your eyes, you're just using your balance system. That's going to be... Keep marching. Good. So now bring your feet together. Like. It's harder. Close your eyes, march in place. I'm not gonna push you. Open. You have better stability. Sure. Okay, so that's where we would want to land when we run. Okay. Hip in line with the knee, the knee's in line with the foot. Relatively, this foot, this leg's different, but we're not worried about that. This times this times this. This, not stable. This is stable. So. To have that type of stability when we're working, we're gonna do a simple drill and we're gonna th think about like a bridge. So when I'm standing on my left leg, my left glute has to be in charge and my abs have to be in charge. So if I'm on the opposite, this ab, this, excuse me, this ab, this glute. 
So we're gonna practice a drill to try to activate those muscles a little bit for you. And I'm gonna pull and squeeze, and we're gonna come, like, pick up my hip, and we're gonna put it down. We're gonna squeeze my glute, use my ab, put my foot down. This will kind of start to turn, yes, but the head stays. Glute, ab, too much, good. I want you to concentrate on it, just activation. Don't make it too much. Yes, good. So, yes. Yeah, man, you're looking good. Good. That's too much, too much, too much. You're doing it Mickey style. Chill, just like a little bit. So no like big mitt movement. We're just looking for, ah, there, working. Ah, activated. Activated, just activate, yes. Just turn them on. Good, nope, see now look. You're taking your foot, bringing it over. Yes, squeeze, glutes, glutes, glutes and abs. Good, so now just jog and then run again. Boom, better. So let's do it again. I know it's silly, but if we had like a, like a, stri a stripe or a stick, you would wanna be able to run on each side of the line. So when you're running your 100 mile runs, that's your gait. That's, this is me running. Show me. I have space and light between my feet. If yeah. you looked at the video, there's very little. You're kind of almost disappearing and then coming around. Better. Feel Good. like I'm like. Yeah, you will feel like <laughs> that. It'll feel like a mile, but it's bar you barely have a couple inches. Good. Are you landing on your feet? Mm -hmm. I'm, let me rephrase it. Are you landing on the front of your feet? I'm, I'm, we're going to work on you, so don't worry about me. I'm looking at what you're doing, though. Okay, so there's our first drill. We want to be able to have our glutes are going to be stable, and they hold ourselves up into place. So there, glute ab, glute ab, okay? And then now... The next thing we want to be able to do, which you do a pretty good job of it, is we're worried about the pull. Like, so you were pulling backwards. It was pretty good on the video. But um, we're going to practice this drill, and uh, it's the pull drill. Your buddy, uh, Brian McKenzie, he does this drill probably with everybody that he's running. Um, so this is, the, this is the figure four that we see a lot of the elite runners uh, wind up being in. So we're going to practice that to activate our hammy and our glute. So when we're running, to go forward, our foot has to go backwards. So if you were out in front of us, I don't want to, I don't want to be here because it's, it's going to put a lot of pressure on our knee. But also at the same time, if we were going to stop, what do we do? We put our foot out. So we're going to stop that. So the, the pull drill helps us kind of get the ability for our foot to land underneath our center of gravity. So if we were gonna jump rope, we would be jumping rope with our feet in line with our body. Mm -hmm. Smooth, you could do this all day. You jump rope, right? Yes, sir. Would you jump rope like this? No, sir. That's what we're doing when we're running. When our foot is out in front of us, we're having that jarring sensation. And so the pull drill is very simple. We're gonna be pulling our foot backwards and we're gonna only do one leg at a time. But in our brain, we want to be pulling the foot backwards and then kind of mentally trying to let the foot land underneath our center of gravity. And it's just his. Why do I feel like you're just moving your right foot? That's all I was doing. Okay. And then you could practice the left because it's easy to control one thing. My foot is landing underneath me. That's what we're trying to right, practice. So you pull. Let's see. This so foot. here, hold on. Stand. Bend this. I'm trying to look at my feet. Bend no, this. I don't want you. No, no. Bend this knee backwards. Bend it Just backwards. Ba yeah. Put your heel to your butt. Put my, oh, bend yeah. it. Yes. Raise it. Don't let me move your leg. I want you to be pulling and using your glute. Pull don't worry one. about your foot. Just worry about pulling and kicking. So just give me like 10 skips. Yep. <laughs> It's hard. Stupid. Yeah. Wait a so sec. So stand right Wait here. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Now stand right here and give yes. me 10 of these. Now, why is the foot going all the way out in front of you? Stop. Yes. Land underneath your body. 
Stop for a second. Even yourself out. Okay, now pick your foot up backwards, put it back underneath you correctly. Yes, good. Stomach is tight. Good, and again, boom, down, up, down, up. Good. Now do it a little quicker. Switch legs. Yes. Beautiful. Good. So now we're going to do just one leg like that. Don't worry about the other leg. Just try to pull, 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 pull. Yeah, that's it. Good. Feel where your foot's landing. Pay it. Good. See, you don't have to have to be so worried about like landing. If you're, if you're bringing your foot back and you're falling, your foot's going to have to eventually catch up and get underneath you. <laughs> See, you look, be you look better in, in those Speedos, man, right now. Why, why am I having such a hard time with this? That's it. That's good. <laughs> All I want you to do is feel like you're pulling your leg backwards. Pull, 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 pull. I do this a lot. Okay, so now let's start that run again. The yeah. one I just did by one no, leg? Just like regularly run like you did before, but I want you to think about pulling your leg backwards. So you're gonna practice the pull while you run. Pull, 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 pull. Do the side view in slow motion and see like how his foot lands. It's gonna land so much better. Pull, 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 pull. Beautiful. Space between the legs. Pull, 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 pull. Amazing. And so this is the pose method of running. I didn't invent this. Dr. Romanoff did, and he's amazing. Uh, he's the. He's just phenomenal. And Who is so, it? Dr. Romanoff. Pose, P-O-S-E. Oh, I think my foot's still too out, far out front. Oh, we're gonna find out in a second. But look at that, much better. See, you're not heel striking anymore. Beautiful, good job. Go back and look at here, boom. Look at that, foot underneath the center of gravity. Go backwards a little bit. Watch now, go, let the foot hit the ground. Get it to right when it about hits the ground. Boom. Almost underneath you. Now go back to the first one and do the side view and look at the difference in your strike. You almost look like a runner right there. Oh! <laughs> no, honest. You just have to smooth it out. And it'll take you a while. This will put the... a lot more pressure on your Achilles. So you'll feel a lot more um, soreness for a while when you're running. It's beautiful, it's amazing. Good. It feels like you're um, running on your toes almost. I'm not so, I don't That's try to. That's what it feels like. Yeah. This, you can't get your foot. Your foot has to slap. Here, where if, whether you're a forefoot or a midfoot, it's still you're underneath your center of gravity. It's less about foot striking because you can be like no forefoot is better than mid mid as long as we're landing underneath our center of gravity this is safe this is powerful think about punching we want our center of gravity underneath our punching our knees are bent we would never fight peg legged same thing with our run why would we want to be here and then foot slams then we're going to have to come up and over that foot so this is what we would do like somebody comes in and is a runner and is developing some type of issue. Well, let's see what you're doing. Let's see why we constantly have iliotibial band pain on one side. Let's see how the body is working. Just like you teach shooting, you have to teach the basic mechanics and then you have to refine it. This is the same thing. We're gonna teach basic running form. That wasn't like a marathoner. That's not gonna make you a two hour marathon, but it'll get you to be able to run with less pain or less likely to hurt yourself in the future. So that's a, this is awesome. I love doing this. Yeah, you'll be better. All right, do it again. On slow-mo? No, just just get the, get the power. Pull, 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 pull. A little bit of space between your legs. Just a little bit. Yes, pull, 
pull, pull, pull. That right leg, man, that's something wrong with that. Pull, 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 pull. Beautiful. So am I driving that foot down? No. Like underneath me? You, you, I just, want you to worry about pulling your foot backwards and let the body take over. We can't have your brain do too many things. Yes. Pull, pull, pull. Beautiful. Good job. It's almost like sprinting. Yeah. Like I feel like the same foot placement as when I'm sprinting. There's no difference. You right? look at an elite marathoner and you look at an elite sprinter, they almost have the same mechanics. They're just built differently. Yeah. You know, skinny little Ethiopian. <laughs> and then giant Ben Johnson, right? He's like Usain Bolt, 6'6", six, six, can squat 800 pounds or can whatever. Really? Yeah, he's crazy strong. You know, he runs with sleds and everything, but it's still the same mechanics. Yeah. Speed is speed. We don't want our foot to touch the ground a long time. That's wasted energy. We yeah. need that foot up in the air. And that's cadence. That's why I'm trying to tap out a cadence for you. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this time with Dr. Steve Sikorsky, named after the helicopter without the money. Without the money and the aero engineering degree. That's okay. He's still a doc and he looks good on film. Hey, if you haven't followed him, go do it. If you like these videos, share them, subscribe. If there was stuff in the comments, like if you're an ultra marathoner and you're like, that guy's stupid, put it in the comments. Please. As well as your home address. <laughs> Hopefully this is, uh, will help you. If you have any uh, questions, you can email me at info at elginchiropractor.com. Uh, this is a typical thing that I do with uh, patients that come in that are runners or ath triathletes. We videotape the person running and then we make the necessary corrections. And uh, hopefully Mickey will be able to run longer and more efficiently and have uh, less of a chance of being injured. I hope so too.